Taylor, I bring you greetings from Michigan Welfare Rights. <laughs> Members and colleagues, observers and whatnot of our organization are among us today so that we can make certain that those leaders that need to be here, some of you are in this room, there are others of you that are waiting for us to call you someplace else. And today, tomorrow, what we're going to do is issue that call. I forgot already. I talked slower. <laughs> Richard Pryor. <laughs> Richard Pryor made a date with a woman that was not his wife. And he went to the hotel slash motel and was in that area. Richard Pryor's wife found out. Came to the hotel, knocked on the door, nobody answered, so she kicked the door in. And Richard jumped up and said these immortal words. Are you going to believe what I tell you? Or are you going to believe your lying eyes? <laughs> That's the world we're living in today. We're telling people what's happening, but they ain't feeling us. We're telling people what the circumstances are going to be, and they keep telling us, no, it's not that way. We are giving people a blow-by-blow -blow description of not only what's happening now, we don't have a Dodge made anymore, we don't have a Huber Avenue foundry anymore, Lynch Road Assembly. We don't have all those plants. But mechanics and industrial, post-industrial manufacturing is able to produce almost the same number of cars. If we have enough food, we can't convince people that the reason they're starving is something other than the system is not working right. We're telling folks, this ain't about you, your race, you married the wrong husband, you married the wrong wife, you in the wrong career, you took the wrong classes in school, you live in the wrong neighborhood, you gay and you should have been straight, you straight you should have been gay, you tall and you should have been short, you short and you should have been tall. This is not an individual fight. This is about a system that don't give a damn about you, the earth, the water, or nothing else. The fight is to convince people that in fact what you see might be what's happening. Could be. We have people all over Michigan, certainly all over Wayne County, all over Detroit that are being evicted from these foreclosed on houses. And every time you talk to one of them, they'll tell you, well, I lost my job. I lost my job. I got laid off from my job. I got laid off from my job. So I understood why the bank or the lending institution had the right for their property. I don't know if this stupidity is in the water, or if this some damn thing is floating in the air, but it's almost like abuse of women. It's my fault. I made him upset. That's what this is about. and it's. At this point, we're talking about a mindset that borders on mental instability. Now, I say all of that to make it clear. When you're dealing with people that have emotional challenges, it's not upon us to try to convince every single person about what's happening. Throw your neck, explain to people what's happening. Those that are crazy, I'm not going to hear you. And that's fine. But one, two, three, ten, twelve will say, tell me that again. And those are the ones we gonna pick. Cause this army is moving. We ain't a stable army. We in the field and we travel. We gotta continue to build this avalanche of resistance, this tidal wave of anger, little bit by little bit. We're going to connect these struggles until we get a wave of anger that's going to sweep these summer guns out of our lives. And we're going to tell folks, we ain't got to live like this. 
Cost of living is going up. Chances of living is going down. We're not going to live like this. If we all going to die, and that's the rule, then we're going to die for a purpose and we're going with somebody else. We have today, and whatever time we have today, to get this thing right. I was talking about it earlier this morning. We don't want to just have a plan and go home and all we get is a tan. We gonna come out here today with some ideas and some concepts about how we gonna change this mother scorcher around. Okay, how we gonna change this bad boy and move it in another direction. I bring you greetings once again from Michigan Welfare Rights. Don't forget, today is the last day on earth because it is tonight at midnight. Let's make this goddamn day. 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Good morning, comrades. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, I want to thank all of you here today. You know, the delegates, the guests, you know, the observers, and all our friends. Can you hear me? A little higher. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, everybody here today, all the delegates, you know, the observers, the guests, the friends that help us pull this together. Uh, we're here at the 7th and, uh, National Convention of Learning. Uh, I just want to make a few opening remarks uh, to try to set historical records straight. Uh, you know, Learner came into existence in 1993. Um, the beginnings, our beginnings was the National Organizing Committee that later evolved into Learner. And the revolutionary movement is now leaping into a new quality of struggle. It can now help but do so since it is the subjective expression of a leap from industry to electronic economy. This process will go through a number of qualitative stages. At each stage, the revolutionaries will have to regroup on a new foundation. The immediate first stage is clear. The quantitative transformation of a highly organized, well-paid, politically reformist core of an industrial working class to the emergence of a new class increasingly pushed out of the capitalist relations of production. This third stage will see how a new class becoming aware of itself and articulating the program for its survival. Its political reflection must be a revolutionary organization that accurately reflects that stage, a league of revolutionaries. A non-sectarian organization that having formed on the basis of the objective process has as its mission to make that class aware of itself as a class. So we just look back over the last 20 years and the struggles that we've been involved in and see how we got here today. It was 18 years ago, back in 1993, and our struggles evolved, you know, around the homeless struggle, if y'all remember. You know, homeless organizing was taking place in cities and on a national level with national homeless unions that were built. That 10 cities uh, navigated the landscape across the country. National marches was called in D.C. fighting around the question of homelessness. And even though that struggle reached a high pitch level, it then ended up coming to a fair conclusion, but it did break through the consciousness of the American people. And it put homelessness on people's consciousness in this country and broke the isolation that the homeless community faced. That was the same period that we started battle around welfare, the welfare recipients in this country. The general assistance attacks that took place in the 90s in the cities and the states that led to 
the so-called welfare reform of the Clinton administration that, that went on to try to end welfare as we knew. We knew it. And that brought another whole section of people into this struggle. It was also the period of time when NAFTA was passed. And, the, and then we saw the open borders for capital to flow across the borders. And the same borders were open for the flow of capital. They were closed to human beings in search for a better life. As walls and barricades and encampments were brought into existence to militarize the border and, and to order to set up deportations of thousands of undocumented workers. We witnessed the criminal attacks and the betrayal of the victims of Katrina. Our youth are under attack from all fronts, lack of jobs, massive closing of schools, increasing tuition costs uh, for higher learning, new private prisons being built, schools privatized in neighborhoods across the country, Family without, families without waters and utilities, struggling for survival intensifies and draw a broader section of the working class into battle. <laughs> you know, in the past, over those struggles, the capitalist class uh, always attacked one section of the class at a time. And they did that in the spirit of the, of the old divide and conquer, you know, processes they've used for years. But the current role today in these budget crises are bringing us a new opportunity. The budget crisis cuts taking place in these states are hitting and confronting every section of the working class. Uh, in the past, we had to rise the cry of an injury of one to, is an injury to all in order to unite that working class movement. Today, the budget battles are uniting them all for us in a practical sense. It's placing school teachers in the trenches with students, form uh, firemen in the trenches with correction officers, and janitors, nurses in coalitions with social workers, you know, even uh, seniors in the, in the trenches with welfare recipients. You know, we got uh, unemployed workers uh, in the trenches with managers. Such situation provides us a new opportunity to push for the new conditions that we confront with you know, as the social response explodes. The social response across the board uh, it is a clear, clear lines of demarcation are being drawn. But objective economic polarization does not inevitably translate into the subjective understanding and political polarization. And that's what sets the framework for the work that we got to do. Um, the eruption in the, in the Rust Belt is a social response to the budget crisis and the budget uh, uh, is a cover for, for moving to replace out, out of our control of our lives under cooperation. The work of the Standing Committee since the last convention has arrived around developing and changing our organization to meet this new set of circumstances. Uh, the last convention that set the basis to do away with the old National Committee and Steering Committee and, and develop a, a stream down standing committee that could operate uh, quickly and try to develop uh, our work on different fronts of struggle uh, are the task that the old standing committee had as, had, had as, had, had as its job. We produced uh, a, a path to power of publications uh, printed in, uh, in, the, in the pamphlet called The Edge of History. We had made assessments of the objective situations and stages of the revolution. Our political evaluation of the work in progress as the league moved towards its decisions from the last convention. The standing committee organized the preparation of the current convention that we stand here before you. And, it's, and even though our reorganization is not complete, it is built on the foundation to take us full advantage of the budget cut battles that lie ahead. Uh, we are carrying out the league's mission to unite the scattered revolutionaries on the basis of the demands of the new class and to educate and win them over to a corporate communist resolution to our problem. As you look through your packet early to, later today, you'll see the information in the league newsletter on the, on the campaign that we plan to wage. It's a, it's a campaign around the budget battles in the